Hi guys, this is Mike at TabletByte.com and we're going to take a quick look today at uh, two of the most popular OS's actually used on, on tablets this day uh, Google Android Honeycomb 3.0 and uh, Apple iOS used for the iPad We have here two devices, this is the Motorola Zoom with the Android Honeycomb and the iPad 2, both come with pretty much similar uh, hardware um, and uh, we should see how these uh, two OS's perform one next to another and which is better and why ok let's power on the devices you can see this is how you unlock the screens on these two devices like this and first of all you're going to notice that uh, Honeycomb is a lot more customizable than uh, iOS you get a bunch of different panels here for home screen actually five so there's a lot of landscape for you to use you have a lot of different screens as well on the iPad however uh, the screens on the iPad uh, can only you can only add icons to them so shortcuts to applications and of course change wallpapers however on the Google uh, on Google Android you can add a lot of widgets as well widgets like I don't know this one this is a calendar widget which will show you your latest uh, your latest uh, appointments or something like this this is a browser widget with, which will uh, save you your uh, uh, bookmark uh, applications and you can just uh, easily launch a particular site from the home page you don't have to go in browser and launch it from there for instance if you want to launch New York Times, just find it here, press New York Times and it's going to load automatically in your browser like this ok so here we, we have New York Times Let's go back. and of course there are some others for instance this is a YouTube application uh, widget you can easily search between YouTube applications like this this is a market application you can find the latest popular application of course if you have Facebook and Twitter and all kind of uh, stuff like this you will get widgets that will uh, will show you your latest uh, updates and what your friends are doing and stuff like this however um, adding all these widgets will make uh, honeycomb devices act a little bit sluggish they won't be as snappy as uh, the iPad is so you should be careful and not add that many applications if you want to, to keep some uh, good uh, to maintain a good uh, experience on your tablet also should tell, should show you uh, the notification uh, system on the Android and uh, compare it to the notification system on the iOS you have here on the bottom right part you have the entire notification system if uh, everything will happen on your computer receive a mail or uh, uh, an application gets an update or you download something or something like this you're going to have these informations right here for instance let's go in the market and download I don't know this one random application install and right now the application is installing and it says right here that it's installing you can see okay back 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 So it said that the application was installing and here it says successfully installed. So you have a notification that says it's successfully installed and you can go ahead and launch it straight from your uh, notification system. Also he, in here for instance when you're on maps you're going to have notification that you're using uh, latitude and stuff like this. And for instance this is the notification for uh, the music player. For instance I can easily uh, access music player and uh, switch between tracks and play and play and pause a clip uh, a song just from this notification system from pretty much all the application I would be in. For instance if I'm in maps I can just play start playing the music in, in here while on, uh, on the iPad for instance if I'm on maps let's say I'm on maps here's maps for me um, I have to go back and play and start a song which is quite complicated uh, you have to press this button and go back and then go to the iPod and then start the song and if again you're on apps and right now you want to, to close the application just have to do the same thing and 
go back and press pause. So it's, it's a uh, it's a lot easier and more intuitive to do this on the Google uh, Android Honeycomb. Also, I should show you these three buttons. These buttons are used for back. And this one is used for home, and this is the multitasking uh, app, uh, button. This shows you all the applications that are running right now on this device. So you can easily switch between them. For instance, let's go. If I'm in browser and I want to go and uh, open maps, I don't have to go on home page, just see all the applications that uh, are running right now and go maps and here, right, here it is, it's maps. And if I want to go back, just press back, take me to home page. Actually, let's say we're in apps and we, we're in, uh, okay, apps, we're in settings and we're in applications. If you want to go back, just click back and we're back in the menu. Or if you were here and want to go straight home page, press the home button and get you strong, straight to home page. So you don't need a physical button for all these functions like you did, yeah, like you need on the iPad. It, this is something I particularly like. Of course, iPad has some kind of multitasking of its own. For instance, let's say we're in Maps, okay. Uh, you can double press the, the home button. We're going to show you what are the six latest applications you're running on your device and you can easily switch between them from here. And this works, so it's pretty much the same as, uh, as on the iPad. And I believe this is a better approach in the background because um, iPad doesn't run all these applications, it freezes them in the background, so all the resources are used for the current application. Thus, uh, it performs a little bit better. However, on the iPad, all these applications run simultaneously, and you can see now that the uh, device is a little bit sluggish right now. Despite the fact that this one has more uh, more memory, one gigabyte of memory, than this one, which has 50 to 512 uh, megabytes, so twice the amount of memory, and pretty much comparable uh, processor. So, like I said, you can easily go to from here to YouTube, switch like this, and from here go to Safari. And from here, go back to Maps. So it's pretty easy to use. Let's take a quick look at the keyboards that you can find on both these devices. And here they are. You can see that layouts are pretty much similar. In fact, I believe that Honeycomb copied some uh, somewhat the layout from the iPad, from iOS. However, you got less buttons on the iOS, so it is a little bit uh, easier to to. Uh, press uh, all these uh, keys here, especially if you have bigger fingers. Um, of course, there are some keys that will require uh, pressing at least uh, two extra buttons. For instance, if you want to to type uh, pound the pound signal, you have to press. Your, uh, you'll be here. Have to press numbers and this and. But this is pretty much all you you can get on all these devices. What I, I would like is uh, to have uh, an, uh, a row of numbers on top uh, because this is something I particularly use quite often. And this, that's what uh, I saw on uh, the customized uh, uh, keyboard you got on the Asus iPad Transformer. So one thing is great on the Asus Android is that you can uh, get a lot of... Uh, uh, third-party keyboards installed on this uh, on this one and this is quite uh, quite something you you will uh, you will enjoy however on the on the iPad I couldn't find any third-party uh, keyboard so I can't uh, actually change the layout you you stuck with uh, with what you get by default from, uh, from in terms of languages the keyboard on the iPad comes with support for a bunch of different languages like 30 or something like this and can easily switch between them like this you can see I selected two languages, which is English and Romanian, and can switch between them like this and get uh, auto correction as well uh, based on uh, on, uh, on those languages because it comes with dictionaries. Well, on this one, you can of course uh, download uh, third party uh, um, uh, keyboards with different layouts for Arabic or something, something like this and uh, you will be able to use this, but it's not uh, the same thing because you have to use all these third-party applications and changing between uh, keyboards and layouts won't be as easy as it is on the... Adding files to your, uh, to your uh, device 
it's a little bit uh, easier on the Android uh, tablet, especially if you have those files already saved on your computer. So let's say you have your music and your videos and uh, all kind of other type of files, documents on your computer. It's easier to put them uh, on this tablet because you just have to connect it to your computer and then copy them in the according directories and then use a file manager like this one to go and uh, surf through all these directories and access all the, uh, all the all the things uh, you want. However, on the iPad, it's a little bit more complicated because you you have to use uh, you have to use iTunes, which I'm not really a big fan of iTunes. However, it's uh, it's usable. It has a, a lot of bugs, a bugs, and a pretty steep learning curve, uh, especially for users who haven't you uh, haven't utilized it before, but. Uh, it's overall a decent software. Anyway, it, the idea is that uh, if you have your own clips and content, it will be a little bit more complicated to add them on your iPad. However, if you already have the content in iTunes, uh, it will be quite easy. You just have to sync it and go and get it on your iPad as well. Uh, plus, uh, in terms of other types of content, uh, you get... Uh, you can easily buy music and video and all kind of books and stuff like this on the iPad from the iTunes store and uh, from some others from for, for instance Kindle and stuff like like stuff like this however on the on the transformer you don't have a dedicated uh, market for multimedia content and this might be a problem right now but they're probably going to to have something like this in the near future since uh, android is an os developed by google it's uh, obvious that it has better integration with google services like maps like gmail like youtube like google talk and all kind of stuff like this so this uh, puts the uh, android uh, device in front of the ipad especially if you use such uh, services like uh, i am and uh, in Gmail, I'm not going to show you Gmail, but uh, in Gmail going to have a lot of uh, some extra options on the on the on Android. For instance, you can mark as spam a, a, a message, or you can uh, mark it as unread, unread, which you can't actually on the iPad. And uh, in some other applications, for instance, let's see Maps. You can see that uh, on the iPad you get to you get directions. Which is okay. And navigation, you get uh, bookmarks and stuff like this. And then you get just have to you get to surf around and see the map. Of course, you're going to need to con uh, wireless or 3G connection for this. However, on the maps on uh, Google on Google's uh, OS on Android you have also layers so this is what you get on both of them but on this one you have layers so you can see traffic information or you can see satellite view and see how the city looks from satellite or you can uh, add latitude and have integration with latitude okay don't accept right now you also have you can add your own points of interest and fine this is my position you can add points of interest and already uh, get access to existing port points of interest for instance around restaurants going to find restaurants around me and here and i can easily surf between these restaurants and uh, find reviews of them and uh, pretty much all these details save the save them on my computer share them so a lot of options you don't get on the on the ipad for maps uh, there's also the youtube application both use native youtube applications let's go ahead and for feature so this is home screen in both cases you got a bunch of different uh, clips you got to scroll between and more interesting carousel on the android but that's not really something we care about then you get to browse between uh, clips and see top actually not sure how you can browse on the iPad but it's very easy to browse here you can browse in categories and stuff like this but let's actually load a clip in the end this one and okay. this one Oh, sorry not the best clip, I believe, this one. Let's try and... Hello, 
Oakland Tucson Black Ops. This is a different video because the slow mo is. I'm going to see that both look pretty much the same. Let's uh, turn this one, this uh, devices in portrait mode. Okay. You're going to notice that on both you get the clip right here. You're going to have description on the bottom. You're going to have related clips. Okay. Wait. You're going to have related clips on the on the side. You're going to have comments. Also nice you have more from on the iPad, more from the same user and comments here as well. You can add the ro your own comments, so pretty uh, pretty much all the things you will need. Also what I don't what I like a, a little bit more on the iPad is that you can go full screen like this on a clip. A so quite easy to user. use. So we've got these two lights to light. So can you go back like this? and it will automatically play uh, the content in high quality if there is such an option and if you have a wireless connectivity on because from what I know you can't play high content uh, uh, high quality content from YouTube if you're on 3G while on this one you, you got to in order to go full screen you have to press this tiny icon here which you can see might be a problem and in order to go back you have to press it again can't just pinch and zoom like this but you can choose to play high quality or low quality content so of course you're going to try and play high quality all of the time and you have more sharing options you have to you can share it bluetooth facebook stuff like this while well, i'm not sure how you can share it on the ipad i don't think you have the option to share your clip from here on the iPad. So a little bit more functions but I believe I like uh, I like the app on the iPad better, the YouTube app on the iPad a little bit better. Now in terms of in terms of messaging uh, you've got uh, Google Talk by default on uh, on these uh, devices while uh, you have nothing for messaging on the on the iPad. So there are a couple of apps, some of them are actually free. What I use is this one, I am plus. I'm going to allow you to use uh, Skype on all kinds of uh, applications like this, Yahoo Messenger, MSN Messenger. However, there's nothing uh, straight out of the box like, like there is on this particular device with uh, Android.